old on the spring tea gray. The world comes alive in spring and the observant person notices the details. The significance is real to all, including humanity, which plays its part and comes to dust as with all creatures great and small. There is good reason to frolic in the spring. Ode on the Spring Lo, where the rosy-bosomed hours, fair Venus' train appear, disclose the long-expecting flowers and wake the purple year. The attic warbler pours her throat, responsive to the cuckoo's note, the untaught harmony of spring, while whispering pleasure as they fly, cool zephyrs through the clear blue sky, their gathered fragrance fling. Where'er the oak's thick branches stretch a broader browner shade, where'er the rude and moss-grown beech or canopies the glade, beside some water's rushy brink, with me the muse shall sit and think, at ease reclined in rustic state. How vain the ardor of the crowd, how low, how little are the proud, how indigent the great. Still is the toiling hand of care, the panting herds repose. Yet hark how through the peopled air the busy murmur glows. The insect youth are on the wing, eager to taste the honeyed spring and float amid the liquid noon. Some lightly o'er the current skim, some show their gaily gilded trim, quick glancing to the sun. To contemplation's sober eye, such is the race of man. And they that creep and they that fly shall end where they began. Alike the busy and the gay, but flutter through life's little day, in fortune's varying colors dressed, brushed by the hand of rough mischance, or chilled by age their airy dance they leave in dust to rest. Methinks I hear in accents low the sport of kind reply, poor moralist, and what art thou? A solitary fly? Thy joys no glittering female meets, No hive hast thou of hoarded sweets, No painted plumage to display, On hasty wings thy youth is flown, Thy sun is set, thy spring is gone. We frolic while tis May.